Olivia Moore. We, wow, wonderful. And the band, awesome. Ooh, we could take more of that, okay? I hope my daughter wasn't here. She'd be embarrassed. Anyway, so, so let's go ahead and begin today. And I want to start with the first or the next slide, which is the real life image of this little boy. His name is Saru. And this is really Saru. He is five years old, and he has been unexpectedly separated from his mother and his brother in India. He is now on his own, and in his aloneness, he is lost. So he begins a remarkable journey to find his way home. And what's so beautiful about this young boy is he never gives up. He never be gives up on this journey, which starts out on a train that unexpectedly takes him from his little village into the heart of Calcutta. Can you imagine that? He is in Calcutta, and he is on the way to finding his home, but he discovers that he really doesn't have anything to support him except his resilient spirit. So in his journey home, he is in Calcutta for a number of months, and then his journey takes him to Tanzania, an island off southernmost Australia, and then finally, finally, 25 years later, he returns back home again to India. So this film, Lion, is all about his journey, and it is a most amazing film that came out, that came out in 2016. And if you've seen this movie, then you're going to know what I'm talking about. Have you seen the movie? So only some of you. I cannot say enough good about this profound film. It is deep, it is rich, and I would tell you that even the most stodgy of hearts, now how many of you have a stodgy heart? <laughs> okay, Evan, and maybe Bernie, even the most stodgy of hearts will melt by this movie. So I'm gonna be checking in with you too. I'm gonna be checking in with you too. It is impossible to see this film and be unaffected. So it's not surprising that it received eight Oscar nominations. And it's also not surprising that this movie moves almost anyone and everyone who sees it. In fact, I'm going to tell you something. I didn't want to see the movie. And the reason I didn't want to see the movie, sad to say, is that the first hour has some subtitles. And if you ever watch movies and you're feeling lazy and, God forbid, reading a little bit is too much work, well, that's where I was. And I started watching it, oh, I don't know, maybe six months ago, and I went, oh, this is too much work. And so I stopped watching it until Val convinced me that this is a beautiful, powerful movie. And something in me just shouted yes and said I'm willing to work for something that is truly powerful and moving, and it does not disappoint. So I want to go ahead and get started with, about the film, and this is Saru as a little kid in the film. And it is, I have to tell you, very challenging to watch him. Because when we see him, he's on this train. He's looking for his mom and his brother, and he can't find them. And he ends up on this train that takes off. It's a freight train. And he gets off in Calcutta, which is a 1,000 miles away from his village. And so there he is. He's on the streets with no family, no friend, no one to care for him. And the streets are treacherous. For children, the streets are a place where children get exploited, they get kidnapped, they die. A lot of terrible things happen, and it takes a lot for a child, let alone an adult, to survive. But Saru, he's smart, and he's brave. He has faith that he will find his way, so he does not give up. And he's also intuitive. 
And so he finds a way as he holds this dream, this dream that lives in his heart, to return home to his brother and his mom. Take a look at this first clip. गणेशतलाण से जिला Even though he is one of thousands and thousands of children on the streets in India, he has it even harder than most. He speaks Hindi and he doesn't speak Bengalese like most of the other people in Calcutta. and he has at 5 years old mispronounced the name of the village that he lives in and so the authorities can't locate the village and when they try to um put out a, a notice that this little boy is lost it only reaches people in the calcutta area and so it never is able to reach his mother in her village so far away and so the authorities fail in their efforts to locate his family and yet with all of this happening saru saru is blessed by unexpected good the first thing that happens is when they are in the um uh, in the police department or the police station he ends up getting sent to an orphanage and that becomes a good thing for him he is there for several months and then um a social worker type woman tells him that he can't stay here but she has good news for him he is going to be adopted by a couple that live on the island of Tasmania just outside of Australia this couple their names are Sue and John Brearley and they're played by John or um Nicole Kidman and David Wenham and they fall in love with Saru. They nurture him and they love him. They are grateful to have him and it shows in all that they do. And so they build this incredible bond with young Saru. And indeed, here is a picture of them, um Saru with his real life parents who have nurtured him and cared for him. 
And I know some of you here have been adopted, and some of you have children who are adopted, and so you might relate even more to Saru's story. You might know what it's like to have parents that nurture you, or maybe you are that parent. Or perhaps you've been adopted, and like Saru, you begin a new home, but you may always have questions and wonder about the parent or the family that you left. And so that is Saru's predicament. He has a great, great family, and he loves his parents dearly. Later on, they adopt a, another son from India, and this child has a lot of difficulties. He has a lot of mental health and um, dependency issues. But Saru adapts beautifully to his new life. He has a profound love for the good life that he has now encounter, encountered. And in fact, 20 years have passed now. And Saru, you might say, has adapted beautifully. And at this point, he has become a true Australian. And he has left a lot of his Indian culture behind. He no longer speaks Hindi. And he has become a college student. He now has moved into a life where he has a very supportive girlfriend. He lives well, and all things are now moving forward for him. But like any of us, like any of us who have unresolved issues about our origins or we have issues about our identities, as Saru becomes older, what happens is those memories of being a young child start coming back to him. He has flashbacks. He has images of playing with his brother. He sees his mother. He is triggered when he is at a party, and there is an Indian dessert that he remembers being hungry for that his brother promised him. And so this young Saru, who now is growing up and, and by all purposes appears to be so well-adjusted, so happy, so glad about his life, now goes through a radical shift, and he starts to become obsessed about the life of his early childhood years. And I think that... If we look at Saru, we recognize that his longing to understand his first home, his desire to know who he was and where he came from, runs deep. And I think for many of us, whether we've been adopted or involved in adoptions or not, we have times when those questions come up, and we have to define ourselves as well. We have to look at who are we and who have we been. And sometimes we've gone through a radical life change. Perhaps we've changed roles or perhaps something has happened and we live in that question of, I don't know who I am. Who am I? And where do I feel at home? Where is my home? When you have these questions... You can truly understand Saru, for I think we all have them at times in our lives. You know, it was interesting listening to Debbie talk about the Jewish people. She talked about Joseph and others who, at Moses, who at times have been displaced from their families. And as I was reflecting on Saru's story, I was thinking about the Jewish people in ancient times. You know, they went through a time when they were in Zion, when they were in Jerusalem, and they were relocated to Babylon. And so I was reminded of, perhaps you know the reggae song. It comes from Psalms, Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows there, we hung our harps. And for our captors, we sang our songs. 
But how could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? How could we sing? This is exactly what happens to young Saru as a young man. He is so happy and he is so grateful in his life for all that is given. He lives a very comfortable life. But he's saying, I don't know where I came from and these images are calling me. They're calling me to know, to understand who I am. And in fact, as he's doing that, he becomes more and more lost to the world. And he starts pulling away from his parents. He shuts down from his wonderful girlfriend. He quits his job. And he becomes obsessed with finding his birth home. Take a look at the second clip. Saru, you need to face reality. What do you mean, reality? Do you have any idea what it's like knowing my real brother and mother spend every day of their lives looking for me? Huh? How every day my real brother screams my name. Can you imagine the pain they must be in not knowing where I am? Huh? 25 years, Luce. 25! Why didn't you tell me that was happening for you? We swung about in our privileged lives. It makes me sick. I have to find out. They need to know I'm okay. I've never stopped you. I want to help. I can't do this anymore. You deserve more. Don't you do that. Don't you dare do that. This is on you, not on me. Saru, we see that he is haunted by these images that are calling him home. And we can say that it is his soul, his spiritual need for completion, his spiritual call to truly understand and define himself that is haunting him. He says, every night, I imagine I'm walking those streets and I know every single step of the way and I whisper in my mother's ear, I'm here. It is with this drive within him that he eventually tells his mother, Sue, that he has this inner journey going on, and she encourages him out of love and out of blessing, which isn't easy to do. I mean, she's raised him since, she was, since he was five. But she understands him, and she has an opening in her heart to let him answer his questions. And so she encourages him with blessing to go forward and find the answers that he is hunting for. And so he indeed goes on a journey, and he goes to India. And he discovers through all of his hunting and searching on Google Earth, by the way, he sees the terrain and he, he lays it all out and the memories are flooding back. They're coming and they're coming and they're coming. And suddenly it starts to fit. He remembers the hills. He remembers the road. He can see the train tracks. And as he hones in on these maps, there comes a moment in time when he says, this is it. This is my home. And so he travels home, and he is looking for his mother. He is looking for where he was, and he can't speak the language, and so he's a bit lost. He's excited. He's overwhelmed. But in this last clip, in this last clip, he goes to the place where his house was, and he is looking for it to be the very same. And the thoughts are running through his mind that his girlfriend said. She said to him, what if you go there? And what if it's not there? 
but he holds that at bay and he's there and it is not the same and so he asks does somebody remember me he brings out a picture of when he was little he says his name Saru does anybody know me I'm looking for my family my mom my brother Gadu does anybody know and so take a look at this last clip come come with come with me just come last clip you see that Saru has found his way home and his mom calls him Sharu but as a little kid he always called him Saru and he didn't say his name in Hindi Sharu means lion and we know that his fierce and his brave spirit gave him what he needed to go on this journey in his life so that he would discover and be free to define who and what he truly is. It has been 25 years. His mother has never left the village in hopes that he would someday return. She has looked for him to the best of her ability. And so this indeed is a day of a dream held in the heart in faith and in love that is now come true and so concludes his 25 year journey and I'd like to share with you just a few images about the journey in real life you'll see that on the top left is the actor Dev Patel with on the left the real Saru and right beneath it there is a picture of Saru with his Australian parents again and on the right, there is Saru with his mother today on the left and his mother, his Australian mother, Sue, on the right. Saru described meeting his Indi Indian mother as the most pivotal, pivotal moment in his life. And it was a year later when both mothers met in India and Sue said, the earth seemed to be sort of moving. I started to cry, and his Indian mother hugged me, and she said, 
He's your son now. I give my son to you. We stood there for quite a while, just the three of us holding each other. And suddenly, all sound stopped. There was only our breathing. You see, Saru, in his journey, he followed his soul's calling. And he found his way home in both his worlds. He lives in Tasmania near his Australian parents, but he visits his mom in India and he takes care of her financially. He visits her several times a year and he has found a way to bring together all parts of his being. And so I invite you today, if you have received a bulletin or if you need a green sheet, you're going to see this paper inside. I want you to pull it out. And if you need one, please raise your hand and we'll make sure you get one. So could we make sure um, they're on the top of that counter by the sound system? And the paper says, Finding Your Way Home. So I'd like you to pull it out and I'd like you to have a writing instrument by you. And I'd like you to, as you hold it in your hand, I'd like you to think about the ways that you may be called now, or perhaps in the past. When have you been called to find your way home? When have you been called by the very core of your being to create a new place, a new way, a new definition of who and what you are from which you can live and always be at home. For Saru, that meant that he had to embrace both parts of his life to create a whole. For some of us, home means that we have to leave what was never home and we need to create a new home within ourselves that truly is our anchor. And for others yet who have completed that journey, finding our way home means that we really feel the depth and the gratitude for ourselves and for those that have been around us, that have supported us in knowing who and what we are. So I invite you to close your eyes and take a moment. Ask yourself, have I found my way home? Is there anything I need to complete on my life journey as I understand truly who and what I am? And if I feel solid in knowing who and what I am, who and what am I grateful for on this journey that has brought me home to myself? What and who has supported me in truly knowing who and what I am? So allow these questions to rest within your being and without figuring it out, allow the answers to begin to come to you. And as they do, begin to write.
And if you haven't completed your writing, know that you can continue later today or perhaps another day soon. But I want you to take your understanding, your paper in your hand, and I want you to hold it in your hands and fold it and bless it. What your paper symbolizes is the richness and the fullness of your journey home. It has symbolized your way to knowing who and what you are. And know that each and every one of us has walked a different way. Each and every one of us has had a different path, unique in how we have lived it, unique in how we have known it. And so today we raise our, our paper and we place it on our hearts and we bless our own journey. And like Saru, we see the good in it all. And we know that through it, the Spirit of God, the Spirit that has always been there, has taken us through this time. And we are truly and deeply grateful. We are home, and so it is. Amen.